we got to get here um, because that story was out today. Mike Friedman, who does a great job covering the NFL, uh, wrote a story today in which he said that the f- the general feeling around the league is that the Cowboys can't afford to keep financially both Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. Now, he didn't give numbers or anything like that. But th- there have been reports that the Cowboys have offered Dak a, a, you know, a deal averaging $33 million. Dak clearly wants more. I don't know how much. Is it 40? Is it 36 where he could just be the highest paid player in the league, quarterback in the league, one, you know, $1 million a year more than Russell Wilson? I don't know what he wants. But what I'm saying is this, Jonas. If the difference, if the difference between keeping Amari Cooper and losing Amari Cooper is Dak taking $33 million a year or $36 million a year, I say he takes $33 million a year and allows the Cowboys to pay Amari Cooper. Where are you at on that? If the offer was $33 million a year, like is being said, I think Dak Prescott would have agreed to the offer. I don't buy the number. I don't think it was $33 million a year. I think Dak Prescott would have would have definitely taken the $33 million a year. His whole thought is, Russell Wilson's getting 35. I should be paid more than Russell Wilson. I, I, I just... I think that the original offer was on the table before Russell Wilson got his contract, and maybe they thought, okay, we deserve more than Russell Wilson, but if it was 33 and it puts you ahead of Jared Goff and it puts you ahead of Carson Wentz, the fact that he didn't take the deal, if this is even true, means one of two things. Either the guarantees, they didn't like the guarantees and some of the terms of the contract, or there was no $33 million deal. But clearly Dallas... But you, So you totally just poo-poo the notion that he wants to be the highest paid quarterback in the league. I I, I think if they came close to 33, I think he would agree to it. Wow. Yeah. See, I look, I, none of us know the numbers, but my feeling has been that Dak and his representatives are saying, look, the cap is about to go up. Yeah. So even if you don't think that Dak deserves to be the highest paid quarterback in the league, with the cap going up, he should be because it's it's not going to be as, you know, punitive to you to give him all this money. And I also think, though, they're looking at it and saying, look, whenever a, a, a solid franchise quarterback comes up, he always ends up being the highest paid player. Yeah. It was golf. Then yep. it was – or was it back Wentz? Then it was golf. You can go even back to Garoppolo, Stafford, all these guys. You end up being the highest paid quarterback, and now it's Dak's turn – so he wants to be the highest. My point is this, though, because Rob and I always argue about this. Rob says get every last penny, get every last dime. And I'm saying, and I get that. I want as much money as, as the next man. But if I'm in Dak Prescott's shoes and I'm going to lose my number one receiver, a guy who has helped me tremendously, Dak wasn't putting up nearly 5,000 yards a, game, a, a season or – 30-some-odd touchdowns a season before Amari Cooper got there. So I think you're you're still with the Cowboys. It's still $33 million. Let's assume it is that. Right. $33 million a year. I think it's worth taking a haircut of a $2, 3000000 million a year to keep Amari Cooper and have a better chance of, one, winning Super Bowls, and, two, putting up better individual numbers. If you could get – here's here's where I think Dak Prescott and his representations have an issue, and this is where I, I see their point. Now, me personally, I would have gotten this deal done a year ago. or, As or Dak before or that. the Cowboys? I, if, I, if I were Dak – the Cowboys, I would have gotten this deal wrapped up and taken care of a year but ago. But what if he wants – what if – what if – what if – I think 40 is ridiculous, but he might be asking for 40 with the I cap mean, going up. But let's say he, it's either $40 million a year he wants or he wants to be the highest paid player in the league. Now what are you saying? You, well, you getting it done? Like okay. how you get it done if, so, he, if so he got those demands? Here's, here's where I, I think the conversation is going in the direction for Dak Prescott's side. The way they look at it as, okay, instead of looking at it like a brand new, we'll just use, for example, four-year deal. Let's look at it as an eight-year deal. We got two million and change the first four years. If you give us thirty-five a year over the next four, 
If you were to equate that out over an eight-year contract, you're getting Dak Prescott in the prime of his career for 18 or $19 million a year. Right. That's where, okay. da- that's where Dak Prescott is looking at it. The Cowboys aren't looking at it like that. The Cowboys are simply looking at it as, no, we, we want to look ahead. I actually think the window is closed to get an extension done. I think it's done. I think he's playing on the tag this year, and I don't. Th- I think next year they're going to have to either figure it out whether they want to keep him long term, and the price is only going to go up again. I think Dallas had their opportunity a year, year and a half ago to get the contract done. They butchered it because of that. Now they're in a situation where you got a brand new head coach, you got a you got a tag that's coming up, and if you're the Dallas Cowboys, I think you're better served waiting to see if this works with Mike McCarthy and then revisit it in the offseason because the longer this goes the more this looks like Kirk Cousins in Washington so well I, look I where here's where I agree with you putting him on the tag I don't think that hurts Dallas oh, unless unless Dak gets in his feelings unless he were to hold out somehow or just be so distraught and so emotional about it yeah. that he can't play up to his optimum ability so but but displacing that if he can go out and be like a professional and play on the tag then actually I look I would have paid him I would have gave him a long-term deal but if I'm Dallas I can't be mad that hey I get another year to watch this guy with our new coach who I know we're keeping and I know it's good so yeah if Dak falls on his face I can get rid of him. So I don't think it's bad for the Cowboys. I think that could be bad for Dak, though. And and, and back to the original question, me personally, if it meant taking a haircut, so to speak, to keep one of my best players on the team, me personally, absolutely I would. Uh, uh, Finally. Absolutely I would. Rob G, finally. But. Actually, Rob G is with – get on the mic. uh, But. He's with Rob Park. This is logic. And you're still making $33 a year. Look, I would do it, me personally. But – that being said, I totally understand why Dak Prescott doesn't want to do it because he's also looking at it like this. Ezekiel Elliott disappeared from camp. Not only did he not show up to camp, he went to Mexico and hung out on in Mexico on the beaches and did whatever he did and got rewarded with a contract that was even greater than what a lot of, thought, what a lot of people thought he was going to get. Dak, but, it, but it was half of what – less than half of what Dak's going to get. Uh, uh, You're talking well, about different, different – I, I know, pay, but – but if you're Rates. Dak Prescott and you're in the same organization, the same locker room, you're looking you're looking at a team. And this is the part that bothers me with the Dallas Cowboys. Like, we all of a sudden assume that the Dallas Cowboys are going to handle everything with logic and reason, and they're a, a, just a well-equipped organization to deal with all this stuff. Dallas hasn't won a Super Bowl since uh, – what was it? Well, how 25 old was Dak? Yeah, years. how old is Dak Prescott when Dallas last won a Super Bowl? Like four days old, something like that? <laughs> like he had won a Super Bowl for a long time. And let's not forget how they how they felt landed upon Dak Prescott. They wanted Carson Wentz in the draft, and Philly took him. So they settled on Ezekiel Elliott. They wanted to move up to take Paxton Lynch in the first round, and Denver got the jump on him, and Jerry Jones was distraught about it. They wanted to grab Connor Cook in the draft, and Reggie McKenzie and the Raiders jump them. Finally, option four was there, and it was Dak Prescott. Tony Romo gets hurt. His backup gets hurt. Dak Prescott steps in and plays fantastic. I get why Dak Prescott wants a raise. Like, for for the bang for well, your buck. Well, a raise, of course. I mean, but I, I look, first of all, I, I'm glad you agree with me. And I'm not saying, oh, let's give all of our, you know, bosses, you know, an advantage and take less no, money. It, I'm just saying they're in a situation where there is a cap. Now, if the team could pay Dak $36 million a year, and pay Amari and keep him, and they just don't want to, if they can fit all that under the cap and they're just like, you know what, we could, but we don't want to spend that much money for the future going forward. We may want other players, whatever it is. Then I'm not giving them a pay. I'm not dealing with them, and I'm not taking the haircut. Right. But if if there's no way they can keep Amari Cooper and Dak at $36 million a year, say, then I'm definitely taking a little less if it, you know, if it's not like ten million, seven million a year or something like that, three million a year from thirty six to thirty three, yes, to keep my best receiver. Come on, that that's why I just I I think that 
Dallas has lowballed Dak Prescott this entire time because I just I find it hard to believe that if thirty three million dollars was sitting on the table for Dak Prescott that he would turn it down. That- yeah, but your logic, you said he he may, which makes it he may be looking at it like let's look at it over eight years. That okay, and, and that's and, and so that's, that might be why I would turn. But it down. but my my point is, I wonder if Dallas has even come over thirty million a year. I wonder if they've even gone over thirty million dollars a year. And Dak Prescott and they're like, hold on a second, like you know maybe we don't need to be the highest paid, but can we at least be on par with the other quarterbacks in our draft class? Guys like Carson Wentz, who Dak Prescott has a better resume than uh, th- with Carson Wentz. I feel like Dallas has lowballed him, and that's why they're at a stalemate. Here's I- what I'd say, and I think you would agree with me. Let's say Dallas has lowballed him, and their offer is really like twenty seven million a year right. or whatever. If I'm Dak or his representatives, I'm putting that out in public. I'm coming out and saying it. I'm whether I might not even just leak it anonymously. I might just say it myself. They're offering me twenty seven million a year. Yeah. And the going rate for me should be in you know, Carson Wentz, I've won a playoff game. He hasn't. Jared Goff, I had a better year than him last year. I I won at least 33, whatever it is. Right. I would put that out because I think the public sentiment would be, oh my gosh, they're not they're not even offering him 30 million a year. Yeah, and you would win the PR battle. But I mean, trying to win the PR battle against Jerry Jones, who's got two interviews a week on a local like what other owner in sports has got two no, interviews it's, a it's, week? Yeah. I mean, James Dolan doesn't that even like fans right going there. to games. Um but I just <laughs> like the the whole there's something da- I firmly believe that Dallas is not sold on Dak Prescott. Like there's something about him they're not sold on. Me, I would, I'm sold on him. M- pay the guy. I he deserves to get paid, especially when you consider what what is what is, he's done for the organization at the rate that he's done it. I think he should have gotten paid a year ago, like I said. But there's something that Dallas doesn't buy into when it comes to Dak Prescott. It reminds me so much of the Kirk Cousins in Washington, Ooh. where they kept franchising him and they kept putting the tag on him, and it's like. Hey, are you serious about him long term or are you just going to let him walk? And ultimately they let him walk. I just it feels like we could be seeing the final year of Dak Prescott in Dallas. Well, Cuz the way that this is looking, I don't know that they're going to get a deal done before the tag and 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 I maybe they're just so far apart that they're just going to play on the 33 million and they roll the dice here's next Here's the deal though, if you tag him and he plays well and you still can't come to an agreement, you could tag him again. Yeah, I <laughs> it mean It could really be the Kirk Cousins thing. Where they tag him a few years. All right, we're gonna throw it out to you. 877-99 on Fox, 877-996-6369. Should Dak Prescott be willing to take a small pay cut in order to keep Amari Cooper in Dallas, his number one target? Hey, good evening, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Yep. Um, just a couple quick points there regarding Dak and his his, his upcoming extension. First of all, and this is just from a personal standpoint, a fan that, that has followed the game closely for, you know, since birth and watch these quarterbacks, just because you're the next guy doesn't mean you're entitled to set the market. Um, I get, I next- agree with you in theory, and we're not – don't cut him off, but that's – it has worked that way, Ron, for guys well, that aren't that – aren't the best, you know, that great, right? Yeah. Well, you, you had made, you know, comparisons earlier on to Jared Goff, who – is a year removed from having his team in the Super Bowl to Carson Wentz, who again, when when Dak Prescott needed one win, went in there with his full entourage, all the time. He's got the best offensive line in football, a top notch wide receiver, a, a Hall of Fame tight end, the best running back in football, and couldn't get a win against that depleted yet led by Carson Wentz team in Philadelphia to win the division and get his team into the playoffs. Look, Dak, you know Dak mean? Prescott Dak Prescott's a, got a better resume than Carson Wentz. He's got more of yes. a gripe for a, for a $33 million contract than Carson Wentz does. Carson's more talented. Yes, but Dak's I agree. Got a, Dak's been more accomplished at this point. But, Ron, but you can't just beat up the sub-500 teams and put it on that. He's when is been, he but get he's that been win? to two out of four playoffs, and he's he beat Russell Wilson in the playoffs. So I I hear you. I don't think Dak is as talented as as Wentz. It, look, it, here's this is just a fact, man. You know, like 
if you want to go back 20 years from now, gas prices have gone up. Everything goes up. It's inflation. Right. That That's the world we live in. Quarterbacks, I remember a few years back, Jay Cutler got a contract that paid him like $17, $18 million a year or something like that. Oh, my God. They were outraged by it. Man, if you told a GM you could get Cutler for $17, $18 million a year, everybody would take no, right? that. Like, remember just, when Garoppolo got yes, his deal? Yes, yes. Uh, and now you look and you go, yep. well, that's a pretty affordable right. contract. Cam Newton's contract coming up is is really affordable. Oh, yes, and like, that's what Dax people are saying. Yes, in, four, in three years, this contract, forty million or whatever he's asking for, won't even be a big. Do deal. you believe? Let me ask because I, I this is why I, I go back to this. Do you believe that Dallas is sold on Dak Prescott as their franchise I quarterback? Do. And Rob's with you, I, but I do. I, I don't think this has anything to do with – like, I don't think it's a Kirk Cousins situation. I think the Redskins clearly had questions about Kirk Cousins. I think the Cowboys are sold on Dak. Now, like me, who's a Dak fan, they understand he's limited. Yep. He, he's a franchise quarterback. We can win Super Bowls with him, but he's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Pat Mahomes. Fair. So, I, I think it's just there's a chasm between what they – want to pay him or can pay him and what he wants. Let's go to Ricky in Florida. Ricky, you're on with Chris and Jonas. Hello, gentlemen. Always an honor talking with you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I, I, man, just look, just go ahead and take the $30 million or 33 man, That's a lot of money. You think he should take less to keep Cooper? Oh, certainly. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, he's not the same without and, Cooper. And, and, here, and here, this is like, I'm a bad person to, to judge this because I actually will split it up into two different conversations. If it were me personally, like Chris, if you had to take a little bit less to keep Rob Guerra around and, and get Rob Guerra paid, <laughs> all right, like would you would you take a little bit less to keep Rob Not Guerra? Rob Guerra oh, no. Okay, but, but Alex but, Tyshirt. But, all right, so no. Alex Tyshirt. Yeah, no, this I, I, I'm not even going to answer that. I okay. love Rob G. I just say that. I love okay. Rob G. I, I'll let you know. I'll say it out loud. But I got I, a family I, to feed. I, okay, no. I'll say it out loud. <laughs> I absolutely would. If it meant keeping somebody around, like me personally, I absolutely would. I've said that before. Yeah. Haven't I said that, Rob G, on there? Sh- should, should, should Dak Prescott do it? <laughs> Yes. No. No, here's the, you don't think <laughs> no. he should take less to I, keep Amari? I, I would. What's but he going to look like without it's, Amari? Look, it's not Dak Prescott's problem that Dallas overpaid for Ezekiel Elliott. And it's not Dak Prescott's problem that Dallas traded away a first-round draft pick for Amari Cooper, and it's resulted in one playoff win and Amari Cooper disappearing at certain times. It's it's but not it is his, his pro- it is his responsibility to a degree to make sure that he they have the best team. Does he want to win? Of, okay, of course. Are they, he wants how to win. are they going to look without Amari Cooper? I, and look, how's he going to look without Amari I, Cooper? I, I don't know that Amari Cooper is. I'm not saying he's Jerry Rice. He's not Julio Jones. He's not. Right. He's not one of these these star studded elite receivers. In a perfect world, I, I can guarantee you, Dallas is thinking this way. Perfect world, we get a, a deal done, an extension done with Dak Prescott, and then we can tag Amari Cooper. In a perfect world, I think that's. I think that's where Dallas is thinking. But if they end up having to use the tag on Dak Prescott. Now we're talking about do we really want to invest that kind of money into Amari Cooper when if you look at the receiver draft coming out, it is loaded top to bottom with stud receivers in look, the draft. Amari's got his warts. I I, I totally oh, yeah. agree with you. He is not he's like Dak. Like yeah. Amari's really good, but he's not, you know, top five Raider, receiver. And same thing with Dak. Ra- Raider fans turned on Amari Cooper in a hurry. Like there were several times where he just either had the drops or just wasn't, just didn't have that dog, games, that, right. that dog to him that a lot of people want a, a guy like that to have. And so he's disappeared at times. What's happening, y'all? It's Chris Broussard. I'm Rob Parker. And we are The, the Odd, Odd Couple. Couple. Check us out as often as you can on YouTube. And always remember, I'm Oscar. And he's feeling. Oh, man. Are you serious?